The year was 2003. The West Indies were chasing an improbable 418 to save face and win the last test of a lost home series against Australia. Ramnaresh Sarwan was dismissed after a century and Ridley Jacobs fell on the very next ball. I came into bat on a hat-trick. Um, Sarwan had just scored 100, then he got out, pulled, trying to pull Bentley, and then Ridley Jacobs went in and got out the first ball. It was a, a kind of a, a funny decision where a, when the replay showed that it hit him on his elbow. So it was quite uh, a intense atmosphere at the ground, people were throwing bottles on the field. Before I went in to get my arm guard and before I could sit back down, I have to go into bed to face Bradley with a new ball and a bouncy pitch. Myself and, 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 and Shiv, we, we developed a partnership. He got out first early in, in the next morning and then myself and Vesper Drake. So I remember Vesper telling me, okay, we're going to do it in tens. I mean, I, I was already 40 yard, 30 yard not out. He came in, played a few shots, a, a couple. Um, took a couple of risks, um, I, I continued to bat in the same vein that I was playing all the time and at the end of the match we were able to do something special. All-rounder Amari Banks, the first man from the tiny Leeward Island of Anguilla to play test cricket, walked in and batted for 207 minutes. His 47 not out, along with Vasper Drake's, earned West Indies a cherished victory. Banks became known as the man who was not out in the highest fourth innings chase in test matches. But these days, his calling lies between the musical notes of blues and reggae. So many ways to say the same thing. In, in the back of my mind, I always had that confidence that I could do something else. And I, especially to, from the point of view that I knew I was talented enough. Um, when I was playing the game, um, I really, in my mind, didn't think while I was playing, hey, I'm going to stop to do music. But when I got to the point, maybe the last six, seven months, it was like, okay, cool, time to move on. Uh, hence the song, Move On, I did. Don't look back and watch you could have done. Just move on, but learn you champion. He grew up listening to reggae greats and the music of his father. Even while on tours with the cricket team, his guitar was never far away. Well, I've really been, uh, I grew up around music my entire life. Um, my dad being a, an artist in the Caribbean from Anguilla, who's um, definitely been internationally known in the Western side of the world. Um, so I grew up in an environment where music was kind of second nature. It really, music and cricket for me has always been hand in hand, whether it is to, to, to support what I was doing when I came off the cricket field, I wanted to take my mind away from it. Um, well, Solomon Ben, he plays with Barbados. I remember when we would play against each other, we would always sit down and jam together. Um, Brett Lee, we, 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 we spoke uh, um, briefly when we played in that first series, and he, he, I knew that he played music. Um, I actually met him a couple days ago, and he, he said, we, we scheduled a jam session um, with Richardson and Kirtley Ambrose after the famous test match in, in Antigua. We beat Australia at 418 chase. I, I went to the um, Richard Chetson's Bar and Restaurant and jammed on stage. My dad was there. Banks's lyrics are inspired by legends such as Bob Marley, Peter Tosh and Jimmy Cliff. They're personal and a reflection of his life. Not just a vehicle of expression, music is now an integral part of Banks's second innings. And so the story grows has more truth unfolds when I'm so far away. Yeah. I want people to enjoy the music and I want people to be able to, to dance to the music. But ultimately there's a there, there's a message that goes along with my music, a message of peace, love, togetherness. Blue skies all around us. Whoa. Yeah.